Welcome to our live training session with a 2003 Subaru WRX. We're going to be taking a look at how to calibrate and tune this using our ECU Flash open source tuning software. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find that it has a bone stock EJ20 engine. It has an aftermarket 30R size turbocharger that's been fitted to it. It has an aftermarket exhaust manifold, a pipe, and catback exhaust. In addition to this, we have an upgraded front mount and charge pipes and an aftermarket blow off valve. On the fuel system side of things, we have DW 850cc injectors and an upgraded in-tank Walbrook fuel pump. Now we also have a three-port boost solenoid and we're going to be learning how to calibrate this using a Carberry ROM and both mass airflow and speed density functionality. We have a lot to learn and a lot to talk about here, so let's jump into our live training session so we can get started. Welcome to our live training session here with our 2003 Subaru WRX. Now we just went over all the details and modifications that have been done to the vehicle. Let's jump into our ECU Flash software so we can create our base file, upload it to the vehicle, and start our live training process off. Now, first thing we need to go and talk about here is we're going to be tuning this using a Carberry Speed Density Enhanced ROM file. So the ROM file that we would normally find in the vehicle from Subaru is going to be a basic ROM file. We can do all the calibration and tuning with that ROM file, but it's not going to have all the additional features and functions and tables that a Carberry Enhanced ROM is going to have. So we most likely want to use that in your calibration process if you're dealing with a 16-bit Subaru. Now, in this case, this is a 2003 WRX. Everything is going to be compatible with the Carberry ROM, so I'm going to be definitely implementing it on this vehicle. We're going to learn how to calibrate and tune this with mass airflow, speed density, and the hybrid combination. Also taking a look at everything from fuel, spark timing, idle control, uh, boost control, knock control, and everything in between. So it's going to be a start to finish type of process here in this live training format. So the first thing that we need to do is actually open up the Carberry Speed Density ROM. If you're dealing with a stock Subaru, so you are, it's never been flashed before, let's say it's stock, and it's not on the Carberry ROM, you could simply go up to the top here and use the read button and read the file out of the ECU and start off your calibration and tuning. Now in this case, with a Carberry ROM, we're going to open up the file that I've supplied in the Subaru course packet folder, and we're going to modify that file and then upload it to the car because the car isn't going to come with a Carberry enhanced ROM. But before we do that, we have a few steps we need to take in order for the actual ROM file to open up and work properly in the ECU Flash software. And that's going to be pointing the ECU Flash software uh, at a certain ROM metadata location. That's where all the XML code is held within uh, the directories and the subdirectories in your C drive. We're going to make sure we point it at the correct location. We have an alternate folder. We've covered this in the training course. We're just going to go over it real quickly here in the beginning of this video, making sure that that's all been accounted for. And then we can move through uh, once we've opened up the file, verified that it's in the right format for either map or load determination, um, then we can move into actually opening up the file and then actually going in and editing it and, and flashing it and working with it. So we have to determine if we want to work with a speed density Carberry ROM that's map pressure based or if we want to work with one that's a load based. Load would be referencing grams per rev, that's what we would use for the mass airflow sensor or we want to go and do any kind of load registration based on the map pressure sensor. So I'm going to be choosing the map pressure Carberry based ROM file. This is going to be unique um, to this Carberry ROM. Normally Subarus do register load in grams per rev, which is a function of the mass airflow, airflow registration. Um, in this case, we can use either with this Carberry ROM, the specific speed density ROM that's map pressure based, but all the load determination is done based on the map pressure as our load input into the actual tables. So in my opinion, it simplifies the process a little bit, and it's definitely more ideal if you're dealing with a higher power Subaru application. So you have a lot of choices here and what you want to choose. This has a larger than stock turbo, um, bigger injectors. So I'm going to be just choosing the speed density map pressure based ROM file option. So we actually go here into our tools. We need to go and point it to an alternate location for the ROM metadata so that we can first open up the file and uh, make sure we're going in and saving it in the proper orientation so that it'll display and we can edit it correctly within the software. If we don't do this step, we can run into problems when the file opens up and sending information that may not be exactly correct with the ECU. So if we go up in here and we're taking a look at all of our different options here under a little option icon, if we move down, we have a metadata directory. This is where it's expecting to find the ROM metadata, which is the XML definitions for the files you're working with. What we want to do here is change this location. So if we go in here and we change the location, we're going to find here, if we go up a layer, 
we're gonna find that we have our ROM metadata folder. This is where it typically looks for all of the XML definitions that are stored on your C drive on your actual computer you're working with. We've drug in a load determination folder here when we were doing the training course and I provided this in the Subaru course packet. We double click in here, we're gonna find that uh, we can tell it to look in load determination for uh, the specific ROM metadata that we might be working with. So just so we're very clear here and what I'm doing and how this is working here, let's just close that out real quick. Let's minimize all of our screens here. If we go into the Subaru course packet and we take a look down all of our uh, different information here, we have XML, ECU flash. We have this folder called load determination in here. We can either select load based or the base load determination. There's two different options in here. And then we also have map axes. We're gonna get into what we do with this or the load axes here. We're gonna get into what we do with that. So in this case, the load determination folder, I simply copied this from my Subaru course packet, jumped into the C drive, went to program files x86, then I went down to open ECU, and I simply went into ECU flash and just pasted load determination here as another folder, an alternate location to look at XML definition code so that we can do a very specific task here in the beginning when we're opening up our actual uh, Carberry ROMs. So that's how and why the folder is there. Let's go and close this. Let's jump back into our ECU Flash software. So if we go back into the icon, what we're doing is telling the software to look in that location rather than looking in the general ROM metadata folder for the XML definitions. So if we go in here and we go up and then we go into low determination, we're gonna say select folder. That's gonna be where we alternatively look for the XML definitions for this first step. Then we're gonna go and switch it back, but let's go here and take a look. So I've told it to look into load determination. The next step here is going into file open, and we're gonna move into our sample ROM files that's found in our super course packet. So this is the subfolder that we have our sample base files that we can work with. In this case, we have a bunch of different options. We have a load based, we have a map SD base. These are general files. These are assuming you have a larger turbo and thousand CC injectors installed. These other options are alternatives to our generic files that we find here. These would be assuming that you're running speed density, you're gonna be running map pressure based in your load scaler, but you're gonna be running the stock mass airflow with the intake air temp circuit, and you're running stock injectors in this file here, or you're running the STI pink injectors in this other file here. I'm gonna just go and start off with a bone stock file that's gonna be speed density based, based on using a stock mass airflow sensor and an intake air temp circuit. And when I do this and I click open here, Notice that the only thing that appears in our current ROM metadata is the exposure of our base ignition timing x-axis determination. We need to make sure we're going in here and making sure that this is set on map based x-axis. We could alternatively change this to load base x-axis or change that back to map base x-axis, but in this case, we want to make sure it's set on map base x-axis. So this file will work as expected and things will appear properly in our current ROM metadata when we go and open up the file and take a look at the normal raw metadata folder for all the XML definitions. We're gonna see how this works in just one second. If you're confused, just follow along here, hang in tight. So what we're gonna do here is just make sure we're setting it on map base X axis, which is defaulted on there already. I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna to go to save ROM as. And now I'm gonna move into documents. I'm gonna go down here and do ECU flash. And I'm gonna create in a, in a Subaru folder here we find that we have some subfolders. Now, this project I'm working with will be live training WRX, so I'm gonna call this live, and then we'll say WRX, and we'll call this SD, just so we give it some kind of name. Now in here, I'm gonna save this file, and I'm going to save it to a different file name, and essentially not over saving on top of this original file name, or saving over top of the original file. That's important because the original file will act as an original base map. We don't wanna go and alter that and, 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 and go in and uh, save over if we've changed the injector size and we're expecting that it'll be stock injectors um, in that case. So let's go in here and just change this as something. We'll just call this base SD file. Just give it some kind of generic name. Doesn't matter, whatever you save it as. And then we'll save. What we're next gonna do here is go file and we're gonna close the, the actual file out. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.